Uh, hello, Bel. Uh, would you like to tell me a bit about yourself? Yes, thank you. Well, my name's Val Maybury. I'm the Teaching and E-Learning Improvement Manager at Hull College. Um, I've been involved in improving teaching and learning wherever it is in the organisation for about 10 years now. Um, and in the last couple of years, I've been working to develop a network of teaching and learning coaches subject learning coaches and um, advanced learning coaches so that we've got a network of staff who can support improvements. Um, recently I took over responsibility for the Ban B's in digital uh, literacy mm. and that's been a new part of my work and so when I saw the opportunity um, to run a CPD project I was really keen to get involved because I thought it was something that would be able to help me if you like further develop those networks and further develop the working together between different parts of the college. Uh, I understand you've been running this project, would you like to tell me yeah. what you wanted out of the project? Yes, I, um, I think I wasn't sure exactly what would come from it, um, but in particular I was hoping to provide um, CPD support for our e-learning team who have a great many skills, who do a lot of training um, across college in the uses of technology, but who um, haven't got a, a teaching and coaching background. Mm. So I was particularly interested in what support um, we, I might be able to provide for that group of staff. Um, I wanted to cement the links between the subject learning coaches and that team, but also the digital literacy uh, band Bs. I was very conscious that the band Bs up until that point had not had any particular CPD because we hadn't got involved in the ELSIS eCPD um, project work. Only a, I think only one or two people ever went went through that process, and it really wasn't big enough. Um, in our college yeah. to, to have significant impact. So really I was looking as t to this project as a way of retrieving some of that um, work and just really to try, as I say, I'm keen on networks and I saw this as a, as a route through to that. Mm. Well, that, that. That sounds good then. Uh, to what extent did you achieve the planned outcomes for the project then? Um, well, it's um, you never get as far as you hope, I suppose. I feel very pleased with the amount of training that we've been able to do, um, particularly in respect of module four. I think that's 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 worked really well and that's that's helped me achieve a lot of the outcomes that I was hoping for in terms of spreading better practice and spreading better um, giving uh, better tools really to yeah. the band Bs and to the SLCs, the teaching learning coaches to, to provide support to colleagues. Um, I feel you know very pleased with that. We've raised the I um, the spectre of different ways to manage change and mm. I think module one, I'll talk about that in a little while, but I think module one has really helped me as well to push forward the idea of f facing change. Um, helping staff to manage that process. Mm. Um, we we are in a period of, of, of change in terms of staff confidence with digital literacy and this has helped uh, us along, along the way with that. We had a very good network of coaching practice already and I think it's just helped us to refine those, further refine those skills, but start to spread it into other parts of the college who have a role in supporting teaching and learning. Yeah. yeah. Do you know the, the project, uh, think, do you think the project's benefited your own practice and other members of staff's practice within the organisation? <clears throat> Without any doubt at all, it's helped because um, I didn't have much confidence in terms of um, digital literacy myself initially. Um, at least not in my own abilities to bring together the a, a team to do to, to do that, and it's just given me the tools to be able to to be able to see that I'm not on my own with that. Mm. Oh, that oh, that's good then. Yeah. Uh, would you like to tell me a bit more about this module one that you mentioned yeah. earlier? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I decided to, to kind of get a crack on with module one really quickly. Um, so as soon as I possibly could, um, I started to roll out the, the, the module one to get people thinking about about change and Cotter's model for change and for us to look as an organisation what we needed to do to do differently. Mm. And that really was coming on the back of some concerns that we got that though we got some we've got very good teaching and learning staff lack confidence particularly mm. in the technology and it's how can we how can we break some of that resistance um <clears throat> i think um i took the materials and used some of the um i put it together really with some of the work that i'd done before that mm. idea of building up co uh, coaching practice to tackle problems and I really had a big focus on as I say in that first module in reaching out to people who hadn't done any coaching at all before mm. um, so that's been been really interesting um, and I've managed to, to to do that in lots of different with lots of different groups of staff I feel of uh, that's probably the most widely disseminated of the modules because mm. it's um, it's easy to do, it's quick to do, and it has a lot of impact quite quickly, I think. Yeah, that's always the best way, yeah. isn't it, on yeah. some things. Um, right, Lizanne, do you just want to say a little bit about your role and how you came to be involved in the project? Uh, yeah, I've been um, a subject learning coach at Harrogate College yes. um, for about six years now. Yeah. And then two years ago I did my training um, for advanced learning coach. Yes. So it was my involvement in that and yeah. training uh, colleagues to become subject learning yes. coaches a year ago. Yes. When you started the project, what were you hoping to get out of it for Harrogate? Well, the tra the training in terms of Alsis, obviously, it's not it's not there anymore yeah. because of the funding. Yeah. So, um, you know, with a view for colleges to become self sustaining. Yeah. The hope was that those people who missed out on the opportunity to do the advanced coaching would get that again through this portfolio. Yes, right. Um, you did. A, I know that you've been doing some work with Module One at the moment, yeah. and you've sort of tackled the training in a slightly different way from how it was delivered at the whole uh, site. Do you want to just say a little bit about you know how you yeah. arrange the training? Well, I, I targeted people who are current subject learning coaches, yes. just because of the nature of, of the module, yes. um, with a view to review the, the module yes. and the material. So it wasn't an interactive session um, yes. where the module was delivered. It was basically looking, down, uh, looking at the, the key outcomes um, and what kind of resources came with yes. that module. Right. Um, so there were a number of us that did that, subject learning coaches. Right. And what did you feel about them? What were your views of the module? Then? We thought, overall, we thought that the module was a really good module yes. and would be suitable for a wider range of um, staff right. within the college. So not necessarily just um, current subject learning coaches or e-guide or Bambi's change agents, basically. We thought there would be a number of staff who would be interested in it because of the nature of it. Um, and I think for us at Harrogate, certainly, it's important to kind of bring that focus back on teaching and learning. Yes. Um, so I guess for staff to get to grips with the wider context mm -hmm. um, and looking at the strategic objectives and yes. kind of how we're moving forward and how we need to move forward with teaching and learning, I think that would be beneficial you know, to a wider audience. Right. But we thought the materials um, were really good in generating discussion um, yes. you know, in groups. Yeah, I think that would be, um, that's an interesting that you've focused on that because we made the decision over here to run it as an interactive session and actually to use it as an opportunity to do just that, bring together mm. um, a number of people from different parts of the college with, with different roles. So we did have some subject learning coaches in those groups and quite experienced coaches, but we also mix those groups with some of the band B's yeah. the digital literacy mm. and also with some of our e-learning teams so we got more of a, a um, more of a cross section I suppose mm. uh, and you're quite right that that was our experience that actually uh, it was of interest to everyone and in actual fact um, I'm, I've also taken the module one to the quizms to the quizm group as well um, so that they could also start to reflect on their role um, as 
managing change and change, provoking change as well. So it's, you know, it is, I think you're right, our experience of it, though we've done it in slightly mm. different ways, yeah. you know, is the same that it is, um, it's a really useful starting point. Um, did you, you, you said that you thought the resources were, were good, Would you, could you focus in on any particular ones that you thought worked very well? Well we, we thought, um, you know, the first, the initial activity where people had to identify um, who played the key roles in the organisation first of all, thought, yeah. thought that was quite important yeah. because some people were aware whereas others yes. weren't aware of who those yeah. key people were. Yes. Um, and the other activity where you're reviewing a number of key doc, you know, documents, the leach report, and yes. harnessing technology yes. and, and things like that. That was that was really good, so people could see, you know, how how far we've kind of travelled and where the focus of teaching yes. and learning kind of is now yes. within the college. How did did you manage to tie uh, sort of tie in during that part of the discussion? Some of our own quality improvement documents. I mean, for example, things like the teaching learning strategy or um, or, or particular self assessment reports. Did you get that? From? Yes, we were, well, we were talk, we were talking about that initially um, in terms of where that information falls and where the quality improvement within the within the college mm-hmm. is, and obviously that is in mm-hmm. you know SAR documentation yes. and falls within school. We felt um, centrally just yes. Harrogate um, as a hub on its own centrally, mm. um, there was nothing really kind of driving that mm. um, focus and the, just through that discussion we kind of you know gathered that. Individuals had already thought that yes. prior to the day mm. but it um, confirmed it for us really yes. yeah. and we looked in more detail. It's a really powerful as a mechanism for bringing together people mm. with some different disparate views really mm. and, and to focusing on, on, on actions. Um, can I ask you now, because we had this we had this kind of a strange day didn't we, when we tried to do module two together yes, yeah. and kind of struggled a little bit with it and um, you know it was uh, it wasn't easy was it? But did you have any thoughts about module two afterwards? I thought I I thought module two was really good where we started looking at who are the change agents. Yes. Yeah. And I thought the discussion around that, you know, as in it, it could be as far as, you know, quizms managers, yes. but then also teachers themselves yes. as individuals. Yeah. So I, I thought that was a really good um, discussion. In terms of the module itself, it was, it was, I think it was quite difficult really in, because we've currently got a subject learning coach package yes. that has been delivered here, has been delivered in yes. Harrogate. Mm-hmm. And module two is very much about delivering that training yes. for that individual who wants to become an advance uh, change agent to deliver a program so it was get, mm. it was pulling together all the good practice that we've, we've already got yes. and I think we do have it mm. it's there it's just pulling it together into a, yes. um, a module um, that can be delivered that not only encompasses subject learning coaches yes. mm. but also e guides and yes. band B so it was it was kind of those extra for those additional roles, the guys of Bambi's and how that would that would fit in. Yeah, um, it raised some di- some difficulties for us, didn't it? Because not having gone down the fully down the e guide mm. route, we, but having developed our own strategies and our own mechanisms, it didn't sort of always sit that comfortably, and it was made it difficult. I think sometimes to. We, it was almost like we were looking for an umbrella, but not everything would fit in. Absolutely, yeah. Um, absolutely, yeah. So I, I, there, there were some sort of difficulties. I thought in, mm. in when you've got a mature organisation with existing structures, um, trying to make things fit together. Didn't, yes. You know, if you were starting from scratch, you might start and run it like this. But because we were working with existing yeah. mechanisms, I thought it was. I think that's why we were struggling. At times. And I think it, it certainly. I think it would make more sense for subject learning coaches yes. because they've been through a similar programme. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I do think there's definitely a, a, a common core that's needed yes. and that could be around grow and the coaching yes. element of it. Just as a, a method of practice, yes. um, yeah. you know, and a technique when working with people. Yes. But yeah. I think there has to be a core 
um, when, when bringing that together. I think you're absolutely right about that, and I think that's what we were we were sort of grasping after on that day, and we did sort of get there eventually. We did, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very <Thanks> much. <laughs> um, could you just start by explaining what you've done so far, in particular, in particular with the Module 4? Yeah, uh, right then. Module 4, I was asked to like mm. take lead on that one, yeah. really. Uh, I, I looked at the, the LICES website and yeah. I got some of the materials from there. And uh, we put together a session yes. where it was very much like one of the open-the-box sessions we had uh, previously. And uh, this time, though, it was based on e-learning. Yes. Uh, our websites, e-learning tools, yeah. strategies, resources. And uh, the module really was like, where could we use them within our own areas yes. and where we could benefit from greatly. Yes. Some of the resources we used was a little bit uh, in the background at first. It was only till we got chatting with other members of staff and the played round with yes. them that we realised, oh, that would be really good that we could use yes. that within these sessions. Uh, oh, that would be a fantastic tool to use with that group of learners and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, uh, the module, on the day, I thought it went really well looking back, yes. really, yeah. because there was a lot of people who was involved in it took something away, yes. which yeah. I think we have used. Mm -hmm. Some of the, uh, for example, the blogging, yes. and that we, we looked and uh, Google Docs. Google Docs, yeah, Google Docs was a, a good one. We, we discussed how we could maybe use that with the managers within yes. our areas. Yeah. So And also with the learners contributing their own input to certain topics and assignments. Yes. So I felt really that it went really well. Yeah. I think if I remember rightly, we did a, we had a sort of a practice session with the subject learning coaches, didn't we? Mm. And that was that, that sort of helped us get a feel for... Yeah the materials and how the session should run well so the coaches as always were really supportive weren't they and they, they let yeah. us practice on them and I think that that sort of felt that, I felt like that gave you a bit of confidence yeah, that, as, as that honestly yeah. yeah when we came to the main training for the for the module four can you remember who took part in that because we had quite a range of different people mm. didn't we it, it was a a widespread yeah. like catch really across yeah. the college. There were subject learning coaches, there yeah, was band Bs from various departments. Yes, the band Bs for digital literacy mm. that we have in the college. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a widespread really f from all areas. Yes. Totally yeah. different areas, social, yeah. um, yeah. well, there was construction, there was, yeah. well, the motor vehicle, but we did have the social side of it, you know, yes. child. Do we have the child yeah. studies so on as And well, beauty, hair yeah. and beauty and yeah, that. So we, we had a right cross reference, yeah. really, yeah, which we works better. I think better. what I remember about that session as well that I thought was really helpful was that by that stage we were starting to get the e-learning team mm. involved from the library uh, as of well. Of course, right? yes, yeah. And <clears throat> that was that was starting to cement the relationships really between the band Bs, mm. the e-learning team and the subject learning coaches. And yeah. I, I thought one of the really good things that came out of that was that the working together in yeah. groups. I think thing. actually that's developed over the last few years, hasn't it? Do you think We're so? Working closely together yeah. and that has helped. Yeah. They understand what we do yes. and we understand what they do. Yeah. And I think we work together better yes. on that one now. Yeah. Better than we did do before. I, I think I think those relationships have all been really built up well as, as mm. a really as a result of the project. I mean, partly it's work that we would have done anyway, but the project has given a focus, mm. hasn't it, in bringing together people with different roles in yeah. the college. What you did after that, <clears throat> you might remember, is from that from the the the, the module four training. We then took that um, that training, the ideas behind uh, the open the box. Yeah. the idea of it we took that to the band base for digital literacy so those people who'd been in the module 4 training then worked yeah. with you didn't they yeah. to disseminate that, that's it yeah. yeah and that was interesting mm. wasn't it that's um, perhaps didn't have we could have done with a bit longer I think on yeah that, if I remember 
Yeah. Do you remember much about it? Do you know that's one of the things when everyone's enjoying it and you're getting good conversations yeah. going and uh, you're hearing so much positiveness, yes. you, you're like, you don't want to stop it. That's right. So that's where your timing goes out the window, unfortunately. <laughs> you, I should be more ruthless, I think, where, come on, we need strict time, but why stop a good conversation mm -hmm. or when you get in where we're getting where we want to be with things. Yeah, mm. yeah. One of the things that came, that that's occurred to me from all three times that we've, you know, trained, you know, trained people mm. was the extent to which it's not only about teaching and learning um, and that this technology is not just relevant, you know, to, to teaching and learning colleagues, yeah. but how much people were saying, but why aren't we doing our self-assessment reports like this? Why aren't yeah. we doing the course team minutes? So there were, we were starting to see other applications, I think, yeah. for colleagues in their administrative roles. And something that came out of teaching and learning committee afterwards was, do you remember Jane said, um, I would like to know more about what you're doing in human resources because I could use some of this technology too. Yeah. So there's an opportunity perhaps there mm. more than we realise to, yeah. to work with service colleagues as well. Mm. One of the activities we did on that day, if you remember back, was we got the staff to put post-its where they think there was. It was like a web yes. with all different yeah. aspects. Yeah. And it was fascinating from what areas they come from, yeah. the difference. Yeah. Do you know, like uh, there was there was things like how do they feel they use certain uh, resources for IT in certain areas and you have to put a post it down a scale yeah. and it was it was interesting to see that some areas use other things more than others and yes. and some areas did need work on yes. which which yeah. uh, which we do but um, I, f I found that fascinating you could analyze that you could yes. look at it and think oh, and then question more yes. that that was a good little activity yes. that it was very good for people to self-diagnose mm. wasn't it where they're up to yeah. what else they might self assess yeah. yeah because it, and that gives a much better direction towards cpd mm. for people than mm. if they're told you've got to go on this course and yeah. college wants you to do that you it, have more ownership yeah it's like that uh, thing how do you know where to go if you don't know where you are yes mm. yeah do you want to just talk a little bit about how you organize that the session might because you know we were given the bare bones of it weren't mm. we from the, yeah. the pilot project you know what? How did you, did you use it? Just as they gave it to us, or did you make adaptations? Well, the I did adapt it, but then again, with e-learning, things are in one moment and out the next, and things change very quickly. I did notice some of the sites was yeah. stopped. Now they're yes. being bought out by other people, which is good in some ways that it shows that there's a demand for it yes. and somebody can see yeah. there's a lot of use for it. But I had to look at the materials and come up with a few of the new ones what would catch everybody yes. to engage everybody because it'd be nothing worse than doing the session there'd be a couple of members of staff from certain areas yeah. didn't get anything out of it yes. so I think uh, I had to do that a little bit give it a few tweaks here and there yes. but uh, overall though there's, it went well the materials were good in essence weren't yeah. they, that, that we were given to it you was, yeah, it was a starting point I think and I think more of the training providers or other colleges mm -hmm. they will pick it up and do the same thing think yeah. mm, that's good but we'll alter that yes. we'll maybe tweak that a bit yeah. to suit their needs Yeah. when we were chatting earlier you said when I do it next time mm. I'll make I'll want to make some changes do mm. you want to just talk a little bit about that yeah, because after we've done the session, I reflected back and I thought, well, we could have improved this, yes. this could be improved, and uh, that worked. Yeah. I'll keep, definitely keep that in next yeah. time. But there's one or two I wanted, so the te teacher and learning really focused on that yes. more, really. Yeah. What's, uh, the people at, who were stood in front of their class, I wanted yeah. more that rather yes. than managers. Yeah, it's good that managers are getting involved in that, yes. but importance is the teaching and learning yeah. in the classroom. I know that's your real that's your real love. Yeah. You mentioned about perhaps making sure that you include Ted in that mm. open the boxes approach. Do you want to just 
to tell me why. Well, the TED, I come across that a while ago mm. from some of our subject learning yes. coach meetings and yeah. I thought that would really be good to include for our tutorials. Yes. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the tutorial sessions are sometimes the most difficult to yes. deliver. Yeah. Within, we say, for example, my joint with students, yes. that love coming to do the joint yeah. with, that's fine, but yeah. you get them to talk about uh, citizenship and yes. stuff like this, it's very difficult. So I thought yeah. TED is a very good website. Yes. What motivates people, mm -hmm. motivational speeches, and yes. a couple three minute clip yes. here and there, and that, and yeah. it will maybe make, improve the sessions. Yeah, so give a bit of motivation. I think there have been some really good links for you as well um, to the other projects that we've been doing. Um, particularly the use of film mm -hmm. in psychomotor workshops. So yeah. I mean, obviously your focus is in the joinery and you've been doing a lot of work using film, having students using film to evaluate, um, evaluate their own approaches. Do you want to just say, do you, th I mean I saw you use that, um, that material in the in the training. Do you think it's had a an, has it encouraged anybody else oh. to take up the idea of use of the video yeah. form? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I do know now. There's some areas in the college who have yeah. we did. Uh, I did a couple of sessions across the college, yeah. and that then got some of the members and staff yeah. thinking, "Wow, simple but effective yeah. way." Yes. And it's it's not ultra modern technology, yeah. video cameras have been around a while yes. now, but uh, I think what they've done, they've realised sometimes you get really good materials, you put them on a shelf and you forget you've got them, yes. and I think that session just reminded people sometimes you'd have to reinvent yeah. the wheel Yes. and stuff. So I think so, I mean I've seen a lot of really nice work that's being produced now in electrical engineering as mm. a consequence really of you sharing that that project worked through module four and it's also spread now into the motor vehicle so mm. we're looking forward to seeing what, what yeah. comes, comes from that. Any final thoughts on what we should do next um, and how you see it progressing? Uh, the STEM mm. for module five I yes. think we could really within the construction we could run a project yes. I think uh, for that unit. Yes, yes. That's if obviously time because we're getting near the yes, end of the year yes, now yes. and the students start to wane yes, off a bit because yeah. they're completed and yeah. stuff. But I think uh, if it was the beginning of, if this was September now, yeah. I would be saying let's run the STEM as a project within our areas. Yes. I think that's given us a clearer direction, hasn't it? it mm. We now know what we want to do next. Yeah. We've written that's the thing. Definitely, we've yeah. Any final thoughts on? Um, guidance and tips for other providers to delivering module f module f uh, four or five come to that. Right. What would you, if you were giving guidance to other colleagues in other colleges, mm. what would you say to them? Keep keep an open mind yeah. and uh, try to tailor it as much as t to the staff's needs. Then it will make them more um, buy on. Yeah. They'll, they'll buy onto it better yeah. and they'll. Yes and the work move forward with it. So it's really looking at what you're being asked to pilot mm. and say, does this work? Yeah. You know, is this the hook, perhaps? Mm. You know, will this work well for, for your teachers and your learners? Yes. Yeah. I'm Emily Armstrong. I am the Cross College Libraries and e-learning manager. And so my role is, in terms of e-learning, is to be in charge of the e-learning support team. So we provide support to staff and students on using things like the VLE, the staff intranet, oh. that sort of thing. Can you just tell me, you've been, been involved in uh, with your team in, in undertaking some of the modules. Do you want to just tell me, first of all, why you were interested in that in the first place? I think it's very interesting to us because obviously we do work very closely in the area of IT. It's interesting to see how this fits within other things. We're very interested in the coaching element of it because we do a lot of one-to-one -one support. Um, so yes, it all looked very interesting from where we were. Right, okay. Were there any specifics about what you were hoping for you and your team to get out of undertaking the change agent? 
I think for us it was a good way, particularly for my team, to make them understand the broader college concept context in which they work, um, to get to meet people from different areas of the college, to find out what's going on, because I think as a support team you're sometimes at a distance from teaching and learning and it was good for building those relationships. Right, okay. And what do you think you've, you've actually got out of, out of the experience? Um, it's been very useful. Um, in the first module we did some coaching which I personally found terrifically useful and yes. helped me to focus on where I needed to go with our um, digital literacy project we're working on. Um, I think it's been very useful to speak to lots of different people from different areas of the college and to understand what's going on in different areas and to identify ways we can support that. All right. Just thinking a little bit about module one, there was quite a lot there, there about sort of coaching, as you said, and you kind of felt you got a lot from that. Did you learn anything, um, particularly from the work that we did on managing change and looking at the Cotter model, for example, for managing change? Yes, I think it's always useful to look at those things. I mean, obviously, we've been through a great deal of change recently. Yeah. Uh, we know we've got a, a big project ahead of us in terms of changing people's yes. attitudes to technology so it's always useful to look at the theory behind that I think. Right. Okay, um, when we did module two we suffered a lot as I recall, <laughs> we did find it quite a, quite a challenge. One of the things that came out of the, the module two was, um, was thinking about the, the role of what a change agent should should be like um, and what, 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 what they should be able to do at the end. Have you got any thoughts on, on that at all? I mean, I think it, the difficulty was, I think, that we got quite uh, engrossed in the history of yes. it and the different change agent roles we've had and how successful or otherwise they were. Um, I think there was a lot of value in looking at a generic change agent role that would take up bits of things that have been done before, so bits of the staff development aspects, bits of the teaching and learning, and bring it all together. And the ability to put those people in touch with each other, I think, is really important. And taking a college-wide view of that is really was really useful. Yeah. How, um, how has it worked? Um, the, for example, the work that you've done with the band base for digital literacy, and the work that you've done with the subject learning coaches, do you want to say a little bit about that? It's been very useful to us to be able to come into those meetings um, to yeah. give short demonstrations and how to's, but particularly to get the feedback to be able to to understand how people are using the things we show them in teaching or how they're not using them, how they do or don't work, so that we know when we're looking at new technologies, we have ideas about how that would fit, about who would find it interesting, and it just helps us to keep promoting. When we did Module 4 um, that Mike ran for the, for the Bamboo for Digital Literacy, that was the first time we'd done training together, wasn't it, as a, as a group? Um, did we, do you think, if we were to do that again, would you do anything differently? I think um, some of the materials maybe could have been different. Yeah. It, it's very difficult with new technologies that whenever you take a snapshot, it doesn't always feel as up to date as it could yeah. because it's changing all the time. But it was useful to have the structure where you went away, played with something, talked yeah. about it in a small group and fed back. I think the structure of it was very good, but some of the materials... Um, could have been updated. That very much echoes what, what Mike said about it actually. Lizanne, I know we've both had a few concerns about module three, the, the, the sort of the coaching module um, explicitly and I'd, I just wanted to, could you just share some of those thoughts about, um, about the, the different constituencies that might be of people, colleagues who might change agents who might be presenting for that for that particular module. Yes, I suppose so. With the with the SLC training that took place, mm. that was the foundation yes. for coaching, and then Elsie's had the ALC yes. training. Yes. So the advanced coaching part of that made yes. absolute sense, yes. you know, to move from that level to that one. Yes. But now we've got because they're opening up, which is a great idea, yes. there'll be people who are Bambis for us mm -hmm. um, that we think are you know, change agents. We might have e-guides yes. as well. Um, where 
you know, and it's those people who won't have had that foundation yes. of, of coaching. So to suddenly do um, that advanced portfolio, yes. which is what this is, um, and that module to be advanced coaching might be might be quite a big step yes. for yes. some people yes. um, because they haven't had they haven't gone through the basics. Um, so it might be something might have to go in there just mm. to bridge that gap. I think I will share your views about that. That where we're moving into, as you say, a, a, a higher level of skills, competence, understanding, knowledge, theoretical uh, underpinning knowledge, um, with module three, it's completely it feels completely comfortable to do that mm. um, with the existing coaches so you know like you and you know I've not found that a, a step it's not been particularly problematic no. you know it just feels like a very natural uh, next step particularly perhaps for people who undertook some training as an ALC who then you know perhaps for whatever reason didn't put together the portfolio but you know I have you know I feel very much the same that you know we've actually said that this uh, that this is available for different constituencies we've said mm. that module one works really well yes. for all sorts of people and yeah. um, you know as an organization we've engaged our e-learning team in this we've engaged our band bees um, and whilst they've had that initial experience um, as that we uh, embedded as part of the mm. module one and um, it's not really enough no. Uh, they haven't got the the foundation stones, so you know that's that's feeling like a gap, mm. um, really in, in that module. Maybe there's a maybe there's something some work to be done on that. Um, you know, yeah, if it's an, an option in yeah. terms of levelness or yes, because yeah. um, in the in the documentation it does mention you know across modules whether it's going to be self directed yes or whether it's going to be a taught module. Um, I think. You know, I'm not sure how that's going to work out really, because yeah. I think some some things need to be. Th there has to be some input yes. for these yeah. people undertaking the portfolio. Yes. And I would yes. say there would need to be more input in that module in particular. Yes, I share your views on on that, and certainly the experience in the past of delivering the the uh, the, the the subject learning coach mm. um, modules, which I know that you you've done as well. You know, it feels very active, it feels yes. like something that you yeah. need to practice, rehearse, it's not really something that can easily be done online, you know, you want, mm. you need to be able to watch each other to be able to yeah. reflect on your own experiences with yeah. others. So It'd be wrong, I think, to do it in isolation or yeah. it needs that interaction, yeah. I think. So there's, a, I think probably what we're saying is that there's a levelness issue, perhaps, for this particular module. Yeah, in the set of some of the constituency. Yeah. People haven't had that yeah. foundation. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Right, well, uh, would you like to tell me a little bit about more about module five and what you have yeah. planned uh, for this unit? Yeah. I think I would if hand on heart I would say that the module five has been the most difficult um module to roll out and I think that's because it requires a um, it has required a, a cross college approach um, and it's taken us some time to bring together the key players um, in respect of, of, of looking at STEM from an organisational point of view. Um, we have been supported in this by the fact that we've had a, a senior manager who's been appointed to take responsibility for STEM overall and I think that that has certainly been one of the key drivers which is facilitated um, being able to move on module uh, five and that manager has now brought together a, a, a specific STEM working group rather I would describe it as a working group rather than a committee mm -hmm. though it is reporting into into governors as well um, and though we've had a few attempts in the past to to bring to, to have 
have a, an overview. This is the first time this year when really we've we've started to look at STEM as a as a whole yeah. college approach. Um, and the uh, really the, the my part of the project has has been um, really has helped to carry that along, but it has also provided, um, I think it has provided a lot of support and, and some, some drivers towards getting, getting us better at yeah. doing that. Um, we've had um, a number of meetings as a group and we're at, now we're a cross-college group, so it is, that, that's a real positive. We've got representation from engineering, electrical engineering, we've got representation from construction. Um, importantly, in my view, we've brought together representation for the first time in the science from the beauty therapy and hair and beauty mm. because I feel really strongly that um, it's in those subject areas where many young women get their first uh, positive contact with and experience of uh, applied science yeah. um, and so whereas many many of them come in without good grades in in science um, you know they're going out with um, quite a substantial experience positive experience of science um, we've got people from marketing engaged in that we've got our e d reps um, we've obviously got science maths uh, teachers involved in it as well because we want to make sure that we're carrying if you like we really are carrying all the stuff who might be yeah. interested in so it's getting a round table um, with everybody who's interested in that so that's happened and I'm really mm -hmm. pleased with that um, we've disseminated uh, some of the discussion cards and we've used uh, we've used the cards um, this talking stem cards mm. as a way of starting to facilitate um, our approaches. Yeah. We've done a lot of work initially on understanding our data and we've started to cut the data um, so that we can understand in terms of levels of achievement, yeah. looking at looking at success of, of, of young women um, on um, on the science, uh, particularly on the science programs, I think we've had a good focus on that. Um, so that that's coming together really well, and I think um, we're also we're doing we're due to do some work this week actually um, on looking at getting a better understanding from at the level of the staff themselves on how effectively we're delivering science practicals for example how effectively um we've got a a, a a a one voice if you like to speak on on maths and numeracy so i, th I think there's there's lots of things that are coming out of it but it's been much harder as a as in terms of the project to do and finish <laughs> i think that's I, I think that's what i would say honestly about it um I the things that I think are the have been some of the um, best work that that's that's come out of this is this opportunity for maths um, staff to work closely with engineers um, in a context that's a bit bigger than just mm -hmm. uh, functional skills meetings. Yeah. So it's you know it tends to be it's very that's that's very much at the business end. Whereas we've been given an opportunity through the project really to look at things a little bit more strategically and I think as an organisation that's what we've started to do. And one of the things that's that's positive outcomes really from the project uh, and from the uh, from these meetings as a whole is a is a STEM strategy mm. um, and uh, be very pleased to share some of the key points um, of that when it's uh, as, as, as that's, that, that's coming together. Okay. That's been a real a, a real bonus and I think really if I had some messages to the rest of the sector it's it's true of all projects but if you've not got senior management buy buying fully I think um, into these it, you know they it, it's really hard to work at, at, at a middle level with this um, you know you do need a group such as we've got now which is a, a, a a slice through the organisation. We've got senior management support for it, 
Uh, mm. We've got the coaches, we've got our, um, our middle managers engaged in this process, but our committee also takes account of the views of, of teaching and learning staff, and those views are feeding in, and I think that's it'll be richer f for, for that. Just for this last sort of section, I suppose what I'm left wondering is, you know, what is our general feedback on the modules? I mean, are we generally... Generally, it seems that we're very positive about most of them, and you know we have had some really good impact. I think. Um, I th I wanted to ask you, Liz, what you were thinking about the modularisation aspect of this, and I know you've had some thoughts about sort of making it a bit more realistic in a sense. For yeah. Staff. Well, I guess I was just wondering whether we could. Um, where staff could gain accreditation mm -hmm. per module as opposed to doing five modules to make up this yes. portfolio um, and it's not it's not just about staff not being able to make the commitment but it might be also about focus at that point in time for members of staff so some might be really interested in and suited to doing module one yes. whereas the current SLCs that we've got it might be best um, that they start with module three um, because all the modules are really really good yes. and there's you know a different focus yes. um, in each of them and I also think that it would open it up to a wide number of staff whereas if you I think as an organization if we're saying um, wanting people to become advanced change agents and you know, it'd be difficult to say, okay, 20 people in 12, 13 are going to do this advanced portfolio because mm -hmm. those 20 people need a cohort of perhaps eight to go through yes. module two and do the training. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, it gets unmanageable, yes. I, I would say. Yeah. Um, so that kind of brings me on to around it being organised centrally too. And yes. if mm -hmm. people are going to do the full portfolio, then... I guess it's for somebody to identify who those people are, yes. you know, at the start of the year. Um, whereas people, you know, maybe jumping on this and, and doing it themselves in isolation where we've got this activity going on and we don't know who's doing what or... Um, but I think there would be a real benefit from them doing, you know, maybe a module at a time or yes. a particular focus yeah. within the year. Do you, do you agree with that, Mike? I mean, you know, you've also had a, you know, been trying to be involved in lots of different modules, both in the delivery and, you know, looking at sort of the mm. content itself. You know, do you agree about the modular, that a modular approach might be better? Yeah, I think it would be better uh, that way, because as like Lizanne said, there's a, uh, a lot of stuff to take on. Yeah. And it's done in a learning environment yes. where you must have a teaching workload as well yes, yeah. it will be pretty hectic yes. also maybe some staff might want to uh, specialize in certain areas yes. yeah. so mm -hmm. i think that the module idea will be good really yes i think having as we've acknowledged the value of module one in 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 managing change mm -hmm. you know it seems a pity not to be able to make sure that as many as many staff as possible you know have have access to that and get a given opportunity to think about how they how we manage change in an organization and I, I, I you know your point about that central management of it I think we've probably noticed that um, as a or perceive that as, as a problem because of the size of our organization mm. you know it's with it, when you've got a very large number of, of staff operating over m many sites um, mm. you know there's you're trying to keep a, a central sort of culture that, that reflects uh, your values um, it becomes a, a real managerial issue doesn't yes. it trying to yeah. say who's doing what where are people up to you know it just becomes very complex in a way that perhaps it didn't it doesn't actually need to be um, I think you know you had this point about the time span for completion. Realistically, where colleagues are, are very um, heavily uh, taken in terms of teaching, you know, you know, I know that's the case for, for for both of you. You know, the idea of being able to modularise and take mm. take a bite bite sized chunks out of it, 
might might be much more attractive, you know, mm. over a longer over longer a period. Um, how valuable in the end is this as a um, as a tool for other colleagues who aren't subject learning coaches? You know, does it as a package does it really work? Yes, I think it does. I think um, I think module one opens that up. It opens it up to a wider range of people. Um, but uh, as I said, I think the that core, the coaching as being core throughout it, is something that needs to be addressed. Um, just so people are not disadvantaged going into it or working with colleagues, um, they kind of need that underpinning, yes. I guess. Underpinning. I feel it's promoting a lot of the uh, key areas where the college is a week, the STEM, yes. digital yes. literacy, yes. and the coaching as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's driving all, all three areas where yeah. usually areas for improvement within organisations. Yeah. So that, that's a positive. Are there any thoughts that you have about sort of um, roles in organisations? You know, is it a, is it a qualification? That's for managers. Should senior managers take it? You know, is it? You know, how does how does it feel, or is it more egalitarian than that? Any thoughts? Should senior managers take this yes. as a portfolio? Yeah. I think they've got to be whether they whether they take it and, yeah. and do the portfolio. I think they've got to be very much involved yeah. in it, um, just because of the nature of some of the the things that yeah. need to be discussed. For an individual to undertake it, where they've got to look at strategy documents, mm -hmm. they've got to look at self-assessment reports, and they've got to look at um, you know teaching yeah. learning strategy, yeah. um, you know that th their strategies that are are set at senior management yes. level, mm -hmm. um, and for somebody to to do that blindly or without the you know the input yes. from senior managers, yeah. um, you know almost working. With them as a yes. as a coach, yes. in effect, I, yeah. I think um, they have to be very much involved in terms of undertaking it themselves. Yeah. I'm not sure that's necessary, yeah. um, but I think it needs to it needs to be introduced by senior managers yes. in these people who are going to undertake it right. next year. Thank you for all of your contributions to. To this, because it's been a you know been been really interesting project. If you had one, um, if you had just one thing to say or one key recommendation, one thing you'd like to change. Have you have you have you got anything? I'll let you start. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the the one for the module for with uh, anything with uh, new t technologies and that you always try them out first. Yes. Because they've been out embarrassing things, so yes. look, this is really good and it's been took off the yes. net, yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Anything for you? To, as a recommendation? Yes. Or, yes. I think for me it would be um, that it, it could be modular, that mm. staff can gain accreditation per module. Yeah. Um, and then there's a, they would feel a sense of achievement having done yes. a module and it's about that, that module and that work being recognised. Yes. Um, and it needs to be suitable because not all, not all the modules are suitable for every change agent or individual who yeah. wants to do this. Um, and I think, I think it's really important that people have focus yes. um, because it's quite difficult anyway, I think, in FE. Yeah. Um, for teachers to, you know, remain focused on yeah. the core activity, um, I think it needs to be something that they undertake that enhances their role, yes. rather than something that dilutes it yes. to a mm. sense where they've got too much going on. I think I would certainly want to endorse that idea of optional mm. modules and being able to take things mm. a little bit at a time, recognising people's different roles in the organisation, um, you know, their different skill set that they they bring to that. Um, I think the modularisation would be a key thing for me also. Thanks very much.